Jesus. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech with NK. In this video, I'm going to propose a solution to the exercise Pizza Pie from CS50's introduction to programming with Python. I'm going to show you how I solved the exercise. However, my aim is just to provide you with a few tips or ideas that you could use when solving the exercise later on by yourself. So that said, let's look at the exercise and see what's expected from us. So if I scroll through all of this and permit me to scroll through this as well, I'm going to come back there, but let me stop right here. So we see that we are expected to create a Python file called pizza.py and implement a program that expects one command line argument, the name in bracket or part of a CSV file in Pinocchio's format and output a table as a art using tabulate, that's a Python module or a package from PyPy at this link and format the table using library's grid format. And if the user does not specify exactly one command line argument, or if the specified file's name does not exist, rather does not end in .csv, or if the specified file does not exist, the program should instead exit via a sys.exit. And if I open up the hints, we're encouraged to look at the CSV methods that could be helpful to us, especially reader and dict reader. Also, we are reminded that open can raise a file not found error in case a file does not exist and we can install tabulate using pip install tabulate. So if I scroll back to the top, let's say we run our code with the CSV file sicilian.csv. This is what the file looks like. You have Sicilian pizza, small and large in the first row, cheese, the prizes, one item with the prizes, two items with the prizes corresponding to small and large. And so this is what the CSV file looks like. Regular.csv here is just another CSV file for another menu. And when we run the code, this is what our output should look like. With Sicilian pizza, small and large as the headers, and these other rows as the inputs in the table. So if I scroll back down to look at the demo, we see that the first time that the code is being run, it's run with no command line argument and so our code should exit and return the message to few command line arguments. This second time it's being run with the argument full and the output was not a CSV file because as you can see, this argument does not end with .csv. This third time it was run with full and bar and the return was too many command line arguments. And this time around, if I press play here, this is run with an actual CSV file, Sicilian.csv, and the code was able to return the right output. If I keep playing this, and this last time, the code was run with regular.csv, and this is a table that resulted from it. And as usual, we are expected to create a folder, we call it pizza, cd into that folder, and then create the Python file pizza.py. And if we want to download the CSV files Sicilian and regular, we can do so on Linux-like operating systems with this code. And when we are done, we are expected to run our code a number of times to test it and see if it's able to return the right output. That's either too few command line arguments, too many command line arguments, file does not exist, not a CSV file, or the right table at the end. So that said, before opening up VS Code to solve this exercise, what I want to do is to go to this uh, link for tabulate. I've opened it right here, but if you just click this, it's going to take you to this same page. And I want us to look at how to implement the module tabulate. First of all, the easiest way to install tabulate is by running pip install tabulate. However, there are different ways that you can run this. If you look at what has been written in here in the documentation, you see that you can run a pip install tabulate. Or if you want to specify the current user in your computer, you can run it like pip install tabulate dash dash user. But one thing to note is that when you install tabulate like this, that's pip install tabulate, you are installing two things, a command line utility for tabulate and the actual library. However, if you want to install just the library, you can run code like 
tabulate underscore install equals to lib dash only pip install tabulate that's to install only the library and not the command line utility and this is for unix like operating systems but on windows you should run it like this set tabulate underscore install equals to lib only you press enter and then on the next line pip install tabulate that said according to this document the module tabulate has only one function which is tabulate However, this function can take a number of parameters and among these parameters we are going to deal with three of them. So the first parameter could be a list of lists as we are seen in this example or it could be a number of things, it could be a dictionary, it could be a data class and here we can see the different data types that tabulate can take. The next parameter that is important to us is the parameter headers used to specify the headers of the table. And I'm going to show you this example here where headers was set to first row. So if you have a list of lists, when you set headers to first rows, tabulate is going to use the first index, that's the first component of that list, as the header for the table, and then send now every other component as the different rows of the table. And the next parameter that we need to focus on is table format. And as we were told in the exercise, the format that we need to use is grid, as we can see right here. And let me scroll down to show you what that looks like. In this example just here, you see that when you run print tabulate of table, that's your list of lists, headers, and here we see that headers was passed just as a variable with contents, item, and quantity, and table format was set to grid, and this is what we expected to return in our file. So with this, I think the exercise is clear enough, and I'll just go back to VS Code and we're going to solve this together. And as you can see, I have already created the file pizza.py. So if you watched my previous video, then looking at this exercise, I bet you'll be thinking the same thing like me. That the code for pizza.py is going to look exactly the same like what we had for lines.py from the previous exercise. And I still have the file opened right here. So if I open it to show you what we did, in case you haven't watched the video, this is the same structure that we're going to follow. We're going to start by importing the necessary modules. In this case, we only needed to use sys. However, for this file pizza.py, we're also going to import CSV and tabulate. Next, we need to use a bunch of if statements to check the number of command line arguments because we remember that altogether we need two command line arguments. And so in the case where it is less than two, that's one, we are supposed to return two few command line arguments. If it's greater than two, we are supposed to exit with the message too many command line arguments. And we are supposed to check the file type, making sure that the file ends in the right format. In this example, it was a .py file that we are expecting. But for this code, pizza.py, we will be expecting a .csv. And if it's not the right file, we are supposed to exit with the message not a Python file. Then we are going to try to open the file in case the file exists. If it does not exist, we're going to catch that with a file not found error and exit with the message file does not exist. However, if the file does exist, we're going to open it and we're going to read the content of the file and save it in a variable. Then in an else block, we're going to write the rest of the code. And since we already have all of this code right in front of us, permit me to just copy all of these and paste it in the file pizza.py and modify it gradually. So the first thing we need to do is to come right here and we're going to import CSV and also from tabulate, we want to import tabulate. So these are all the modules we need to solve this exercise. This first statement is going to remain the same. We're using the len function to count the number of command line arguments the user is going to pass when running the code. And so if the number of arguments is equal to 1, we're going to return or exit with the message too few command line arguments. If the number of arguments is greater than 2, we'll exit with the message too many command line arguments. In this other line, line 11, instead of checking .py, we want to check .csv. And so if the second argument reason why we're using index one year does not end with .csv we want to return not a csv file sorry this should be in uppercase csv file then we're going to try to open the file in read mode and instead of using read lines what we want to use is a csv reader 
So here I'm going to equate lines to CSV dot reader file. And one thing I want you to note here is that lines is not a list. However, it's a CSV reader. But what we can do is we can convert this into a list. Let me create another variable or call it menu. And I'm going to use the list keyword to convert lines into a list of lists. And with this done, we're able to read through our file and save each line in the variable menu. This Excel block is not going to change because if we have a file not found error, we want to exit with the message file does not exist. And last but not the least, I'm going to remove all that in this else block. Remember the else block is going to run only if the try block runs successfully. And all I want to do in this else block is to call the function tabulate. I'll say print tabulate menu as our first parameter. And for the headers, I'm going to set headers to first row to tell tabulate to use the first row in menu as the header for the table. And I'm going to set the parameter table format to grid. And this should do to solve the exercise pizza.py. So if I save this, I open up my terminal, I'm going to run python of pizza.py without any parameter. And if I press enter, as we expected, two few command line arguments. If I run this again, and let's say I enter cat, not a CSV file. If I run this again, cat dog, too many command line arguments. And finally, let me run this with an existing CSV file, and that will be Sicilian, Sicilian.csv. Oh, file does not exist. Oh, looks like I haven't downloaded it here. So now that I do have Sicilian.csv installed, if I run this again, sorry, downloaded, we have our table. Let me increase the size of this. And as you can see, Python or pizza.py, Sicilian.csv, and we have our table. So with this, we can see that our file pizza.py works correctly. I hope the code is clear enough and easy for everyone to understand. But in case of any doubt, before starting this, I went ahead and created a Jupyter Notebook to help explain a little bit what I did in the exercise. So looking at this notebook, you see that in this first code cell, all I did was to import tabulate and CSV. Then I went ahead to open the file sicilian.csv using csv.reader and I converted the CSV reader we called reader into a list and saved it in the variable menu. And in this code cell, I printed the content of the variable menu for us to see. And as we can see, menu is a list of lists with each element corresponding to a row in the file sicilian.csv. I didn't like this output so much, so I printed it one more time using the for loop. And as we can see, this is our first element, the second, third, fourth, up to the last. And these are the rows of the file sicilian.csv, each saved as a list corresponding to the elements of our list menu. So I want to believe this explanation should help make the exercise a little bit easier. However, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than pleased to answer you. If you enjoyed the video, do well to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. That said, have a good day.